is up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Bart Johnson here, and it is once again Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and that means it's time to go live. And as much as I did to get everything all set up, you know what I realized I forgot? My overhead rim light. That makes a huge difference. I look like I'm in a cave right now. Give me just one second. There we go. Now the lighting's complete and everything looks a lot better. You know, with all the things you have to get set for a live show, you always end up forgetting something. Um, yeah, so, but we got that going. But anyway, so we are here, guys, Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We are live. Um, I see we already have some people hanging out in the chat. Uh, we will get to uh, the chat in just a minute here. But first, I just want to say welcome to those of you who are watching live. And if you're watching the replay, don't worry. We're going to dive into today's sort of live review first look um, as quickly as possible. Um, and I will put uh, a, a time code link in the description down below if you want to skip the chit chat and get just to the content. Um, but I see we do have some people here in the chat. So let's pull the chat up because, of course, that is the beauty of live. Let me... Make sure I've got this here, and we're going to go right here and pull this up. So we've got the TC, he says, LOL, love this music. Um, he's talking about the elevator music that I play for my lovely uh, subscribers and watchers as they wait for the stream to begin. It's, uh, it's some great, great elevator music. Um, Walter from Being Detroit, hello all. And of course, Kevin, the basic filmmaker, welcome. Um, Danny Grizzle, uh, don't you have leaves to rake? This is a four day weekend with five days of work to do. You know what? I am lucky enough, uh, that my brother-in-law, um, <clears throat> has a beast of a gas powered leaf blower. And we actually had him come over the day before Thanksgiving, uh, and take care of all of our leaves. Don't worry. Don't worry. You know, we, we, we pay him and everything, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's my savior. <laughs> for that to come by and uh, and take care of all the leaves. So uh, all we had to do was worry about Thanksgiving, um, which, of course, uh, Thanksgiving has just passed here in the U.S. So for those of you in the U.S., hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Hopefully there wasn't too much family drama. I know some is probably unavoidable. Hope you had some delicious food. And uh, I know this year was probably quite different from previous years uh, because of social distancing and limiting the amount of guests to an event and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but we had a great one here. I smoked a turkey like I have for the past, I think, five years now. Uh, I did it once and now I'm kind of obligated to do so. So I hope you all had a great uh, holiday. Kevin says, I curse leaf blowers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're not for everyone, but you know, uh, gets the job done pretty quickly. So, all right. Anyway, we've talked leaf blowers. We've talked we've talked turkey, uh, but I want to get right into uh, what we're actually going to be talking about today. I wanted to, you know, I've as I've been finishing up my studio downstairs, I've got a lot of gear that has been sent my way uh, for review, and I just haven't been able to shoot the review videos. Um, and so as the stuff is piling up, I wanted to start going through some of that. And so today we're going to take a look at something that was sent to me from PD movie. Um, that is my disclaimer there. This was sent to me by PD movie to take a look at. Um, they don't have any, um, input on what I say and don't say, they just want my opinion on it. Um, and of course they will not have seen this video be, you know, before it's released because we're live. So we're going to take a live look at, um, a wireless follow focus system. Uh, it's called the PD movie live air two. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, and we're going to set it up, see what comes in the kit. We're going to try it out on, um, one of my cameras here with my cinema lenses, which can be a little bit stiffer, uh, and see how it handles it and all of that. So we're going to go through that today. Um, but before we get started with even that, one thing that we do like doing on these live streams is I like to do a, a live poll. Um, so I do a poll for the live audience who are participating here and we check the results at the end of the stream. Kind of a fun little engagement thing. But of course, if you're watching the replay, don't worry, you can participate too. Link is in the description down below. And um, I make sure to leave those live so that even if you are watching the replay, you can go ahead and participate. So I'm going to right now uh, paste that link into the chat 
and reveal what this week's poll is. So this week's poll, since we're talking about a wireless focus system, is how do you prefer to pull focus? Uh, so do you prefer to use a wireless system, a wireless follow focus system, something like the, the PD Movie Air 2 or something else? Uh, a regular follow focus? Now by regular, I mean the ones that are you just turn by hand and are usually mounted to your rig so it's a direct connect to the lens no electronics or anything um, do what we call pull from the barrel where you actually just have your hand directly on the lens and that's how you pull your focus or are you an autofocus fan um, obviously manual lenses you can't autofocus and it depends on which camera you have as to how well autofocus works but Maybe you're an autofocus person. So go ahead and use that link there in the chat and in the description down below. Go ahead and let me know how you guys prefer to pull focus. Um, and maybe, maybe you'll find a new device that is for you today if you like the way the PD Movie uh, Live Air 2 works. Um, and if you do, links and everything, of course, will be down in the description below. Uh, so you can go and check it out. But let's uh let's dive right in and take a look at this thing first i want to show you guys it online if you haven't seen uh what we are actually talking about so let's see here's the second screen oh, oh my amazon thought i was talking to it but anyway here here it is uh listed on b and h um who knows maybe cyber monday it will be cheaper i don't know um but this is the uh live air 2 compact wireless focus control kit and this is what was sent to me so it comes with um a little sort of cage type thing um, and we'll put that together and I'll show you uh, how that is um, and a controller and a motor um, so pretty standard to what you would see with most wireless follow focus systems but this one has the addition of having that cage um, come in the kit as well which is kind of nice if you don't have a cage but of course you don't have to use that cage um, and we'll go through that anyway so that is what we're going to be taking a look at so let's go ahead and actually get ourselves right into that so here we go um so i've got my my little surface here for demonstrating it and i'm going to show you guys what we actually have that comes in this kit all right so the first thing is that cage that we were talking about so this is the cage it actually comes in four pieces uh so four metal pieces here um and it is adjustable so it has two screws right here and it does come with the allen keys for that so what you do is you loosen these two screws and then this actually adjusts and changes for the height of various cameras now I've only tried this with my Blackmagic cameras and it does fit because um, it does have a, a mounting point at the top that goes into the camera. And then of course it has the mounting point at the base and then you can put a tripod plate or whatever on there. So, you know, I, I'm not sure, you know, if this doesn't line up with your cameras, you know, bottom and top screws, you know, cause there's no adjustment width wise, but there is adjustment height wise uh, to be able to adjust that and use it. So let's set that aside with its little Allen key there. Um, the next part of course is going to be uh, a mount. So it actually comes with two of these sets. Let me, here's the other one here and here's this guy. So what it is is it's, uh, it's a little 15 millimeter rod and 15 millimeter clamp. Uh, that also has a cold shoe attachment at the bottom here. So it's a single, got dog hair in there, single tightening knob up here at the top, tightens everything down, both the clamping and the, let me get that into, where's my focus point? It's so small. Oh, it's just getting some sheen. But uh, it's a single single knob to clamp everything down. This is what it looks kind of looks like kind of put together and clamped down. And this will either attach to this cage or you can attach it to um, your directly to your camera's cold shoe or hot shoe or to a cage that you may already have. Uh, so you get two of those uh, in this kit right there. Then the next and probably most important thing is you get your motor. Um, so this is what they call their motor mini. Um, PD Movie does have several different kits of, uh, of wireless follow focus systems. Like I said, this is the Live Air 2. So it's sort of at the bottom of the, uh, of the food chain of, of 
you know features and all that kind of stuff but it's simple small compact and pretty affordable at that $300 price point um, but we'll get into that a little bit later but this is the motor fully wireless um, has a slot here for batteries uh, we'll take a look at the batteries in just a second because it's kind of an interesting way that they do it uh, but really not much to it there's a single button on here that does multiple functions but the main function that it does is to calibrate the motor to your lens uh, so here we go. Uh, next, we have the controller. So obviously, this is your controller wheel. It does have hard stops at each end, which is kind of nice. Uh, it's sort of a rubberized grip here, and everything else is a little combination of metal and plastic. This feels like metal. Um, but rubberized grip with hard stops at each end. Obviously, you use the calibration and map this with the motor to your particular lens and then you go end to end you don't have a problem uh, it comes with this built-in little clamping mechanism here um, it's kind of the only way to mount it uh, I kind of wish it had like a quarter 20 somewhere or something so you could attach it to your cage um, but basically what this is is to clamp it onto um, like a tripod leg or a grip uh, of something or uh, onto your tripod handle uh, you know that comes off the back or even just to sort of handhold this unit um, and go ahead and do it and so it has single button on off um, and also has some multiple functions depending on how many times you tap that button and it has a slot for a battery as well um, and then it also can take a five volt input uh, which I thought was kind of interesting that they have a 5 volt input on the controller but not a 5 volt input or any other input other than battery on the motor uh, I found that kind of interesting because usually you have this on your rig and you want to you know pull power from somewhere on your rig to supply to this and you could get away with you know a battery in this um, so not quite sure why there isn't any other inputs here and obviously this takes uh, a bigger battery uh, than this guy here uh, but anyway you got that in the kit there um, we've got some screws for that cage uh, we'll get to those when we're building it but let's take a look at those batteries because they're very interesting so this is the battery for the motor uh, see it's a thicker kind of double stacked I believe they're they're lithium-ion batteries um, but you can see it's it's sort of like a double celled battery pack here proprietary battery um, now you do get two of these doubles let me get the other one out so two of these doubles for the motor um, but then you also get a single so this is only a single cell with uh, same exact thing and this is what slides into the controller but what I realized actually because one of these sets came apart on me um, these doubles are literally just this single glued together <laughs> um, so uh, interesting way of doing it you know same contacts and everything um, it's just two of them sandwiched together and I think they're literally kind of super glued uh, but yeah these uh, go ahead and go into the motor and this guy goes into the controller so you get two of the double stacks you get one of the uh, single stack for that motor um, of course then you get a charger for all those batteries um, it is set up with two of the double wides so it's sort of rubberized so it holds them really nicely um, so the doubles you know go in there and then the single since it's you know half of one of the doubles goes in there as well just sits like that friction fit charges via USB charges them all at the same time um, so you know it's kind of nice that they are the same cells just doubled up because uh, this charger handles all of them so you're good to go on that we got our charger but everything's charged up so we're gonna get this guy out of the way um, and then the last thing you get in this kit if you don't have uh, you know cinema lenses or anything with gearing you do get two uh, rubberized little lens gears and they're pretty nice they sort of open up and clamp into themselves you know, if you've used any sort of DSLR lens or anything that doesn't have this uh, this pitch gearing on it, you're probably familiar with these. Um, but yeah, you get two of those. Uh, I don't need these because the lenses we're going to be using are my Schneiders. Uh, so they're cinema lenses and they already have this 0.8 uh, pitch gearing on there. But you get two of those. 
All right, so that's the kit. That's what we've got in it. Um, you also get the Allen keys that you need, two different sizes of Allen keys to adjust the the rig and all that stuff. So let's uh, let's pop back up and take a look at our chat. I know we've got some stuff going on and then we'll start building um, this kit on my camera. So let me see what we've got here. Um, the TC saying wireless focus all the way for scripted stuff, otherwise a total hassle. Interesting. Um, Trevor says, I'm still a fanboy of my Nano, but the PD movie looks pretty nice. Yeah, that's interesting. He's talking about the um, Tilta Nucleus Nano. Uh, that is very, a very similar system to this in terms of its simplicity and its uh, price point. Um, I also use the, the Nucleus Nano, and so I've been interested in seeing you know, which one will I prefer, the Nano or, or this guy? Um, so I haven't taken this guy out in the field yet, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna see how it is in terms of at least setup, calibrating a lens and how quickly and reliably it works here. Um, so Danny Grill says, I'm buying a Canon C300 Mark III this week for autofocus. That's awesome, man. Unless I go nuts and buy two FX6s in, <laughs> instead, but I don't have Sony's glass. Wow. Uh, well, either way, I think you're going to be very happy. Those are those are all very nice cameras. So congrats on uh, on picking something like that up. Um, that'll be good for your tax purposes uh, at the end of the year. You know, spend spend that money uh, so you can deduct it. <laughs> um, um, and more people talking, the TC talking about liking the Nano, uh, says it's frustrating sometimes with bugs. Yeah, uh, the Nano does have some bugs. We're going to see how the, the PD movie does um, compared to that. Uh, Trevor saying, I wish you could change the AB throw distance on the Nano. Other than that, I have no real issues. Um, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Uh, this does have an AB function uh, that we are going to take a look at, but I do believe it does still map it to the entire throw. Um which actually is kind of nice, you know, if you really just need to hit a mark from A to B and just turn and crank it and know that the lens is going to stop when you hit your hard stop, knowing that, that the lens is going to stop at the, the correct point. Um, it's kind of nice. Um, Danny Grizzle, DJI's new LiDAR autofocus is wild, uh, works manual, lenses, vintage glass. Yeah, um, that is something that is... I, I'd like to get my hands on and try that out because uh, that's a whole new world of, uh, of autofocus stuff. Although uh, I do have an old, old video from NAB years ago where Red Rock Micro had a LiDAR system um, that would handle uh, focus tracking and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's not necessarily new tech, just no one seemed to really give it much of a thought back then. Um, and now DJI is, uh, is bringing it out. Um, let's see here, talking a little bit more about uh, lenses, uh, working with uh, the Nano, and uh, looking forward to seeing how this compares to the Nano. Okay, cool. So with that, um, let's get this uh, let's get this rigged up. And what we're gonna do today is I am going to set it up on my Blackmagic Pocket 6K here, and I have my. Um, one of my Schneider Xenon lenses on here. Um, so these are cinema lenses, which means they do have the gearing on here. And they're, they're a bit stiffer than, you know, DSLR or photo lenses. Uh, they're not as stiff as some cinema lenses, uh, but they are stiffer than, you know, your, your general lenses. And so what I want to see is, does this thing have the power to reliably drive this uh, this focus gear because because that matters depending on what lens you have how much torque it has um, Aram's in here saying I've had connection issues with the PD movie follow focus Ooh, well, let's see if that happens today we'll uh, we'll check it out so I, I do want to say it is Bluetooth um, so yeah it's it's sort of a different uh, different way of, of communicating but Oh, and Aaron popping in here with the 399 super chat. Thank you very much, man. I always appreciate it. That helps a lot, especially during these times now that I no longer have a full-time job. <laughs> what am I talking about? This is my full-time job. Uh, but anyway, let's get this stuff all cleared out of here. Where are you? I want, nope, we already saw that. There we go. This is what we want here. So we're going to ditch a lot of this stuff and keep just the rigging components for this cage is what we're going to take a look at first. All right, so let's get those out of here. I'm going to need my Allen keys. I'm going to need my cage and I'm going to need my camera. Um, so like I said, this cage is adjustable in height. Um, so 
they do show it demonstrated with the pocket cameras and it is suited pretty well to this um, but you may be able to get it to work with other cameras as well. But first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and this guy goes on. Oh, whose idea was this? This is super awkward. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this. I'm going to do the base one first. So let me find my hole there. And we'll get this guy threading through and find it. All right, and now that I've got that in there, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one down. And this cage down here on the bottom does have a 3 8 and plenty of um, quarter 20 threaded holes uh, for you to add your own tripod plate to this in the end. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and flip this over. Now, as you can see, since I have these side screws loose, this will go up and down and adjust for the size of your camera. Uh, let me get this guy roughly in position. And this top little screw. And this one is an Allen key, the larger Allen key. Where are you? So it's sort of like a little uh, little half cage that comes with it. All right, so now I've got two points locked in there. Now I wanna go ahead and tighten these down on the side. So this cage doesn't give you any real protection over your ports and all that kind of stuff. No like HDMI lock or any of that. It really is just a, a really simple um, sort of little half cage setup, but we'll tighten these. And there we go. All right, so that is the rig. You know, little sort of half cage. Uh, has two uh, cold shoe points up here on the top. A uh, little side handle thing. Um, it's, it's okay ergonomically. Nothing fancy, nothing special. Uh, but that is it right there. Uh, so what we're going to do next is we're going to take one of these guys here. Like I said, the 15 millimeter rod with this cold shoe clamp. It does have a thumb screw to loosen everything up. Actually, is this the one I wanted to use? Oh yeah, it doesn't matter, right? I'll take this guy, loosen him up. Am I loosening or tightening? There we go. And I'm gonna slide this into here. I'm gonna extend that out to a little bit past where the focus ring is, or the uh, yeah, the focus gears are on my lens, and I'm going to tighten this down. Trevor's saying, may 2021 be the last year you have to carry around a toolkit to put simple accessories on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do have a huge collection of Allen keys, and I'm sure everybody else does too. Uh, but yeah, you know, tool list, tool list. Let's make 2021 the toolless year. Um, but there you go. So that's the basic setup here on the Pocket 6K. Uh, we have this rod right here. And next, we're going to go ahead and get our motor set up. So here is our motor. Let me get the camera out of the way just temporarily. So here is our motor. Like I said, there's nothing to it. It's completely wireless. Um, and all you do is take one of these uh, double stack batteries. Um, and pop it in and as you can see the lights on so this thing is on the moment you put the batteries in um, and so it's it's blinking and it's searching for someone to talk to uh, so we'll get that in a minute um, Kevin's asking quarter 20 on top of a black magic pocket cinema do they include a cold shoe adapter uh, for cams without that yes they do um, so like I said the kit comes with two of these and so what you could do is just take this and if you have an existing cage uh, so here I have, you know, a, a small rig cage. You could do the exact same thing. Um, just loosen it up enough and slide it into. Get in there. Need to loosen up. But there you go. You could and swivel it however you want it um, and do that. Or, you know, this could, of course, go right to the cold shoe on top of your camera as well. So you don't have to use their cage. Um, it, it does come with two sets of these so that you can go ahead and 
just use this if that's what you wanted to do. And here we go. Set that down. Hang on a second. My my neighbor is asking me to help him with his Christmas lights. Um, I'm doing a live stream right now. Sorry, buddy. I'll help him afterwards. That's what neighbors are for. Okay. Anyway, so um, let's continue right along here. And we've got uh, the motor now. The motor's powered up. It's got that double battery in there. It's auto on as soon as the battery's in there. Um, and what we're going to do is go ahead and get this guy onto. Let me loosen up that thumb screw a little bit more on there and engage those pitch gears with the with the lens gear and tighten it down all right so that's it um that is the setup at least on your camera um to get this thing up and running and then the next part of the equation is obviously the controller here so it's the same sort of deal with the controller but we take a single stack battery and is there a way it goes in and a way it doesn't oh yeah it's got these little wings uh so it won't go in the wrong way um, and you pop it in there and just push until it clicks click did you click i think i might need to move this guy out of the way a little bit get in there well that's kind of frustrating it's a little hard to click into place there you go um, yeah, not the, not the best implementation, uh, for, for getting that battery in there. It's so recessed that it's really hard and to get it out. They do have a little window here. Let me see if I can show you. They do have a little window here where you can see it and you have to push the battery down and then scooch it out. Um, not the most elegant. There it goes. Clicked it in pretty good that time. Um, but then you would just take this and clamp it to wherever you want, or you can just go ahead and use it handheld it has the on off button right here and power that on these two are gonna talk to each other Let's see if they find each other if I need to reset the uh... let me let me get this guy out so with the motor it's similar you have to push the batteries up and out that way and pull it out all right so let's do this I had been pairing it with uh, with the app, so let's see if they go ahead and pair. So they do come prepared, and usually they connect within just seconds. Boom, there we go. Um, it's just because I had the, the motor on and searching for so long without this here. So this guy is now on and controlled, and I will have control as soon as I, ca as soon as I calibrate. So... The next thing I need to do is calibrate this lens right here. And the way you could do that, there's actually several ways, but the easiest way is with this calibrate button right here on the motor. You press and hold that. And what it's going to now do is it's going to go through my lens. It's going to find the ends where my hard stops are on my lens. And we are now all set. So now, if I take my focus controller, boom, pretty fast. It is driving this cinema lens. Um, let's see how responsive it is for me just creeping along. That's actually pretty responsive. Uh, they are connected by Bluetooth. Uh, so, you know, proximity, obviously this is great signal strength because they're right next to each other. I haven't tested the range on this. You're not going to want to go too super far because it is a Bluetooth connection. Uh, but for, you know, something on like a gimbal rig, if you wanted to set this up so that you can quickly get your thumb to this, um, then this would work really well. Um, and that's actually doing doing a pretty good job uh it did it's not drifting it is hitting the uh the ends uh you know close focus and infinity focus it's on it um and it's not drifting uh that's actually not too bad at all um so another way to calibrate if you can't get to this is you can actually push the on off button here there's a single button on this motor or on this controller um, and they do have uh different functions that it can do but if you tap it 
uh, seven times just quick, like ba 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 ba. It will do the calibration as well. And there's some other functions that it can do, like, uh, or actually, I think you press, 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 and then hold. Let me let me give you guys the right information here. Uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Okay, so on Bluetooth controller, so the auto calibration, you push it one time and then hold. So press, so quick and then press and hold and it'll get the motor to calibrate. Um, and that's pressing the button on here. Um, if you if you click it uh, seven times, let's see. There we go. Um, it changes the direction of the motor. So if, you know, depending on how you like it to, to work or which way you have this mounted and facing, me personally, I like that when I roll away from me, it focuses farther. Um, and when I roll towards me, it focuses closer, but obviously that'll change if I have the motor on a different side or if this thing's flipped and mounted a certain way. So you can use this Let's see, it'll give me the confirmation. There we go, give me a little green or a little blue uh, blip letting me know that it went. Um, and now I've reversed the, uh, the motor control, uh, motor direction. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. So like anything, um, it's gonna take a little bit of learning because obviously you have very limited buttons and controls. And so, uh, you know, this one button on here has various functions depending on combinations of pressing it. And actually the one button on here actually has various functions, you know, very similar to this one. You just gotta kind of check out this manual, unfortunately, and it gives you a little like Morse code style details as to what they can do. Uh, the primary ones that I would use are that motor direction and of course calibration. Um, you know, you're always gonna wanna calibrate your lens um, and you're always gonna want to be able to change the motor direction to whatever you like. But you can also um, set focus limits with this. Uh, so it's, so let's see, if I wanna go here and set an A point, I go ahead and I click once. There we go. Go here and set a B point. Click once. There, now it's set my A and B. And now look, my entire turn. So there's my, I guess it gives me a little green light or a little, why do I keep saying green? Oh, so it's blinking to let me know that I have, oh, that's nice. So it's blinking to let me know, since there's no screen on this, it's blinking to let me know that right now I have A and B points locked in. But the A and B points are mapped all the way to the full rotation of this. So I'm at a hard stop here, and that's uh, one of the points that I set. When I go, you see how far I'm turning this versus how little this is going? It's just going to my other point. And so when I hit my hard stop, I'm there. So I wonder if I click again. I'm out and now I have my full range of motion is mapped back to the full rotation of my lens. That's pretty quick and handy. Um, like I said, there's no screen on this similar to, or like there is on the uh, the, the Tilta Nucleus Nano um, and the Nucleus M. Um, they have screens that show you, you know, okay, you have an A point and a B point set and all of that. Um, this does not have a screen to show you, but it does give you indicators on here and everything is controlled with a single button. Um, so that's uh, that's interesting. It's, it's pretty intuitive. Um, you know, it could take a little bit of, uh, of learning so that you'll, you know, you won't need that little manual with you to remember what the combinations are. Uh, but once you know those combinations, it seems to be working really well. Um, and no drift. Again, we're in an ideal situation here. Uh, these two are right next to each other. So uh, I don't really have a way to test the range, but you know, if you're familiar with Bluetooth, you know, it's, it's a Bluetooth connection. So you're not gonna get super crazy range um, on it, but it is good enough for, you know, if you had this on a gimbal or if you had a focus puller who's not too, uh, not too far away from you, you know, you hand this to your AC with a little wireless monitor um, and they could pull some focus. It is pretty darn responsive. I'm not seeing any like backlash on uh, on this right here on the gear. It's it's pretty stiff, pretty strong. It's responding to even the slightest little bit. Um, that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna leave this on. Let's get back into our chat and we'll take a, a little bit more of a look at these here. So let me get back up here. So chat chat's been busy. Chat's been busy. 
Um, let's see here. Um, Aram says, I agree. Uh, I changed all my external devices to NATO rail connections. Okay, so that it's easy for you to just quickly lock and, and move stuff onto uh, to your cage. That is one thing that I kind of wish they had on this with some other mounting option because um, there's no real way to mount this to a cage. So sometimes when I'm using uh, wireless follow focus, um, even if it's on my cage, I will mount the wheel and I can turn and, you know, I'm not really using the full distance obviously of uh you know wireless but then it allows me to just pop it off hand it to somebody else um move the the rig to a gimbal or something where i can't access the camera easily um and then i can do it but this guy it's only mounting function or method is this little clamp um and I guess you could you could put like a 15 millimeter rod off of your cage or something like a, a little stud um, and you could clamp this to it. But I do kind of wish that there were some other options, um, you know, even just a, a quarter 20 something somewhere. This thing is so thin and small. I can see why they didn't put a quarter 20, but I wish, you know, I would have almost been okay with it being a little bit bigger and having a quarter 20 mount because then you could put, um, a NATO clamp on it from, you know, whatever company you want. Uh, you could put a, you know, cold shoe mount on it. You could mount anything to it and really customize the way that you can mount it to whatever you want to mount it to. Uh, right now you're going to need some sort of, uh, either, you know, tripod or, or tube or, um, like I said, some sort of stud with like a 15 millimeter cause it will clamp onto, uh, onto a 15 millimeter rod and you could attach it to your your cage or rig sort of that way. Um, so not the easiest of rigging, um, but in terms of setup and functionality, I mean, it's working, uh, the, it's driving my cinema lens, which is, which is nice. Um, cause these are my primary lenses. And the last thing that I would want to have to worry about is, you know, is this thing going to be able to push and respond? And it, it moves, it moves very quickly. Um, and is keeping up with, with those focus pulls. And we'll give it some quick focus pulls in just a minute to see how quickly it can, you know, snap focus if it needs to catch up. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. We talked about uh, the cold shoe adapter, so you can use it without their particular cage. The cage is just sort of like an added bonus, I think, in this kit. Um, you know, I, I don't know if if I'll really use it. Um, I usually do now rig up with my small rig cage, uh, but of course anything with a cold shoe, you're going to be able to mount this, uh, this system to it and mount the motor onto your rig. So whether you use their cage, uh, their little half cage, or if you use your own system, or if you don't use one at all, and you just want to put it right into your, uh, your cold shoe, I would just be a little bit wary of the torque, um, that can be in there. You know, it might damage your, your cold shoe on your camera. Usually, uh, doing it with a cage or something is a little bit safer and stronger. Um, let's see here. Trevor saying, um, I bought the new side handle with a battery for the Tilta with the integrated focus wheel. So no more little batteries to keep track of, but now my kit's at $400. Yeah. So, um, he's talking about, you know, that is one thing that the Tilta kit has is there's a lot of different components that you can get and you can sort of a la carte build your own system. So he got a, a powered, uh, handle, uh, that can control it all. And, um, but you know, your price is starting to climb as you're adding more things in there and more functionality. Um, let's see here. Trevor says, I think there's one guy that writes all those little awful mini manuals. They're, they're always wrong with me. Yeah. These little mini manuals, man. Look, it like unfolds to this long. Um, and in their defense, one side is Chinese. The other side is English, but it covers, um, it covers some of their other components. So this is actually able to work with some of their higher end controllers. Some of their higher end controllers can control this motor as well. And they do have instructions for that in here as well. Um, like I said, this is sort of the low end of the line, uh, basically affordable and, you know, simple. Uh, to get it going but you can look into the rest of the pd movie line and they do have some higher end uh controllers and all that kind of stuff i do wish uh that they had uh some different powering options especially for the motor you know all you've got is sort of these proprietary batteries um there's no way to connect to 
five volt power, 12 volt power, whatever you would need um, to put in there. Actually, I'm kind of curious, um, how many volts does it say are these? Uh, so these are 3.7 volts each. So what are we talking? 7.4 volts in total for the dual pack. So it's getting about 7.4 volts um, is what's running this motor. And that is equivalent to like a Sony NPF battery. So even if they had like a DC barrel connector in, and then you could attach a Sony NPF battery somewhere and, and run, you know, 7.4 volts into it. But for right now, at least on the Live Air 2, um, you're using their little battery packs. Um, it is nice that there are two of them for the motor um, because the motor does not have an on off switch. Once the battery's in there, it's on, which, uh, you know, and obviously it's a motor, it's driving it. It's going to use more power. There is an on off switch on the, uh, controller wheel, which only uses one of one battery, the little half stack, uh, or single stack, I guess. Um, but you can turn it off and save battery. Um, and then it also has that five volt, uh, input option. Again, weird, I think that they have it on the controller and not on the motor uh, to get that in there. I assume the motor probably won't run very well on 5 volts, but like I said, if they could get like a 12 volt or even just a 7.4 volt input to give us some options, I think that would be nice. But maybe I'm asking too much. Like I said, this is the affordable lower end of the, uh, of the spectrum here that we're looking at. All right. Do, do, do. Uh, what do we got? Um, Turb was saying, I think I prefer the larger wheel on the Nano um, to that small wheel, unless it's part of a handle. Yeah, um, that interesting. That is interesting. You know, this is a pretty small uh, little wheel, but for this particular unit, that's kind of what they were going for. Like I said, they do have other controllers that have larger wheels, and some that'll even control multiple motors. So you can have, um, you know, Iris and Zoom, uh, whatever you have you know, gears on your lens for, you can do multiple ones, but for the live air, um, it really is the, the tiny one. So it's, you know, it's small, you're working it with your fingers as opposed to maybe doing your, your whole hand. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not completely opposed to it. Um, but yes, uh, you're right. The, the nano has uh, a bit bigger of a wheel, um, and you kind of get more of a, a grip on it. So personal preference there. Um, this is a nice responsive wheel, uh, does have those hard stops. Uh, so it doesn't just spin forever on you. Um, and, uh, and it is a nice rubberized texture. So, uh, you will get a, a decent grip on it. Um, cause I've definitely had times where, especially when you're doing really, really minuscule focus changes, um, that, you're like, all right, am I actually turning the wheel or is my finger just lightly slipping <laughs> along on it? This one, you you know. Um, so that's kind of nice. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Aram says, uh, the PD Movie uh, follow focus motor is strong, but it would disconnect after a few minutes of not using it. I had to pair them again. That's interesting. Um, hmm. So I had the issue up front when the motor was turned on and I hadn't turned on the controller for a while that they had a little pairing issue and I had to do like a quick re, you know, pull the battery out and put it back in, but then they synced up automatically. Um, so that's interesting. So if you leave them on and not used for a while, you're saying that you've had issues with them losing their pairing. Now I know they do have a quick like button press combo uh, for pairing, um, but I've actually found that, you know, if they're on and in the vicinity of each other, they find each other and they pair pretty instantly, but it will require more use and testing down the road to see if I run into the same issues uh, that you're having. Chadwin Smith says, glad to see you back uh, on the lives again. It's good to be back, uh, having a good time, um, getting lit, but in a good way. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, it's been really great to be back. A uh, little, little side note thing uh, for those of you who, who may have been keeping up to date on everything. Uh, it was last year, uh, Thanksgiving night, that our house uh, caught on fire. Uh, we weren't home, um, but, uh, you know, it was bad. It was bad. Um, we were out of the home as it was being rebuilt uh, for about 11 months, and we just moved back in like two months ago. Um, and so we're in here, but yeah, it's, uh, 
it's crazy. There was a little bit of anxiety and just it felt almost surreal having, you know, Thanksgiving um, and being like, wow, you know, like this this holiday last year, like our, our lives were being turned upside down. So that was that was pretty crazy. Um, but this year was much happier. Everything was great. Had some family over, had a good time. Um, who do I have for tonight's fight, Tyson or Roy Jones? Uh, you know what? I don't really pay attention. So, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And Aram's asking also, uh, are you still loving your Z cam? Uh, short answer. Yes. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, or yes, I am. Uh, I, I love my Zcam. Uh, I got to shoot actually some uh, some political ads with it that went on uh, on television, which was uh, was pretty cool getting my my Zcam footage out there. So, um, and Catley says my comment didn't appear on stream. Um, what was your comment, Catlis? I'm also looking at the chat on here, and I didn't see anything that was like withheld. Um, and I'm on live chat, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I didn't I didn't block your 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 comment or anything like that. Uh, I just haven't seen it come through. Um, but anyway, there's a couple more things I want to talk about um, with the uh, the live air two here. So let's take a look real quick at fast sort of rack focusing. So let's see. Okay, I'm still. Yeah, I'm still there. So how fast will it go from one end to the other? So watch the wheel and then watch this. I'm going to crank this as fast as I can and get it to the other hard stop. And we'll see if this is keeping up or if it's a little bit slower. And oh, a little bit slower. All right. So here we go. And hit it. So it's maybe like a half a second behind. But of course, how often are you going to be racking completely? That's pretty on. I mean, how often are you going to be racking from minimum to infinity in like one turn? Um, and you'll find that with with most uh, you know wireless follow focuses. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to find that with the Nano as well. If you did something that extreme, there's it's going to need a little bit of catch up. Um, but I mean, this thing is responsive. Like I'm looking at even just creeping minuscule adjustments. And it's reading it and there's not a lot of backlash and by backlash i mean like uh it, it, it's usually in this gear right here where it will wiggle a little bit and so you get a little bit of slack and so it's not as responsive on minute micro adjustments like this but as you can see you can test it by sort of wiggling back and forth and it's responding it's moving it's moving the lens it's moving the focus even in just these little increments. So nice and nice and snug in here. Not uh, not a lot of backlash in this motor, which is actually pretty good. Uh, what are you guys saying in chat here? Talking about the fight. Um, uh, oh, Catalyst is saying uh, it was the website says it eliminates the need for DTAP power. Uh, is that a way of saying it does not support DTAP? Um, the input voltage is less than nine volts. The tilt on nano can do 16 volts with DTAP. Uh, yeah, so that's interesting. So they're like I said, this is the live air. It is the lower end model, and they are pitching it as being easy to use, simple, and compact. Okay, so you know some of the stuff that I'm complaining about, like oh, why don't I have pro powering features for the motor? You know, that's true. This actually wasn't necessarily designed to have those features. It was designed for people who don't use that and just want something that you pop the battery in and it goes and it runs, which it is doing. Um, you are correct that the uh, the Nucleus Nano is a little bit uh, higher end in terms of it can take uh, various voltages and inputs into its motor. Um, this one is 7.4 volts uh, as determined by these, uh, these two 3.7 volt battery packs um, in here and no other inputs. Um, so you know, if that's if that's something that you want, you want the simplicity of just, you know what, I don't want a, a, a DTAP rig, I don't want cables all over the place, I just want to click my battery in and I want it to work and I want it to drive all my lenses, this works. Um, so that's, you know, it's, it's, it's who it's targeted for. Uh, if you're looking for more, like I said, they do have other... Um, 
uh, higher end products. I don't want to say higher end, but other tiers of products, uh, controllers and motors that will will do a little bit more. But this one is sort of the the stripped down, keep it simple, you know, keep it simple, stupid um, setup, you know, and. It, it's up and running it's working it's pretty compact here and it would be even more compact if you didn't use the cage and just put this straight to a uh, a cold shoe on top of your camera or whatever so that's interesting um let's see here uh talking a bit more about the fight and there we go so the last thing that i want to show you guys um is that even though this is their sort of lower tier model, it does work with some of their higher tiered uh, models as well. So like I said, this motor will work uh, with their higher end uh, control wheel that has some more functionality. It can also be paired with uh, other motors and stuff if you want to sort of a la carte build your kit on top of this. Uh, but another interesting thing is that it works with an app. So it is Bluetooth. So I want to show you guys the app. Um, so since it's Bluetooth, it'll connect to your phone, you know, whatever, and, and then you uh, can control it that way. But where is my app screen? There's my app screen. All right, so this is the app. It's here on my phone. Um, I've got it pulled up. I'm not connected to it right now because you can't be connected to multiple Bluetooth devices at the same time. So right now I'm connected to this guy right here. Uh, but let's see if I can connect... To this so I'm gonna power this guy off okay so that's off I'm actually just for safety gonna pull the battery out and restart this motor and I'm actually going to quit this app all right so it's the remote air app as you can see there so what I'm gonna do is plug turn on the motor let it blink and let me know that it's broadcasting itself trying to find Bluetooth devices Yes, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Remote Air app. This is a free app um, that will control a lot of their devices, including this. So you can get a tutorial. Um, I don't need that right now, but let's see. Did it find it? I'm not sure. Um, I was I was having some issues trying to pair this earlier. But anyway, what I want to show you here is uh, obviously this app has controls for zoom iris and focus uh, so you could really build out a big system and and use this app to control everything um, it's not programmed in and connected right now but yeah you could set focus marks you can set a and b points you can do your zoom um, there's a lot of stuff you can set um, and what you can do is here you go you can actually program in lenses so it knows exactly what distance it is you know on a different lens so if i were to use my you know my schneider here i could go in and set up a custom schneider lens and say that okay when you're in the middle of the zoom it's or when you're in the middle of the focus it's you know 10 feet or whatever um they also i believe have um download lens data so you can download ones that have already been put in uh, so if other people have mapped it and put it in there um, you can go ahead and download uh, lens data from various manufacturers um, but the kicker and i haven't done this yet um, so i went to my schneider to see if my xenons were in there um, but please sign in so i guess you need to go to the pd movie and you need to set up an account um, and then, you know, log in. So you'll have a, a profile and then you can start downloading, um, lenses, lens profiles, and, uh, and then you can add your own and you'll have control here if you wanted to. I'm not sure how much I would use this with this particular system, but this is something that the Tilta Nucleus Nano does not have. Um, it does not have, uh, an app control. So, you know, you may or may not get use out of this, um, but it is pretty cool. It's very similar to what Edelkrone did with their um, their focus uh, module for their motion control system, where you can program in particular lenses. I mean, of course, you can go ahead and just use it, but you can actually program in lenses and be like, okay, when you're at this point on this lens, it's 12 feet. When you're at this point on this lens, it's 15 feet. Uh, so you can get really precise uh, measurements in terms of feet or meters or whatever you're using. Um, in the app you just have to either program it in yourself you know train your lens or download some of the existing ones that have already been in there so kind of cool 
Um, and one thing I do want to mention, I've been talking about cinema lenses with hard stops. Uh, of course, there is a manual calibration mode for DSLR lenses or lenses that don't have hard stops, uh, where when you do the calibration, you set it to your infinity, tell it, okay, this is the end, and then set it to your minimum, and then this is the end. Um, so that's how you would map lenses that don't have hard stops, because I've been using lenses with hard stops today. I just realized I should have mentioned that. Um, let's get back into our chat here. Why do I keep going there? There you go. You want to see my behind the scenes? See, it's crazy, guys, because um, I my last video last week was talking about um, uh, issues with uh, streaming software like OBS and Streamlabs OBS in Mac OS Big Sur because uh, I updated and all that stuff. And um, obviously, I got streaming working, but my uh, Stream Deck buttons cannot control my streaming software yet until there's an update. And so I'm used to touching my nice little icons and knowing where everything will take me. Uh, but now I'm sort of clicking within the software itself and <laughs> I get kind of lost sometimes. I need my buttons back. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Uh, do, 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 do. Trevor said, um, what do they have as the estimated runtime for the motor and handle? You know, I'm not actually sure. Um, I have not run these down. And of course, it's hard to say because your runtime, uh, especially for the motor, is going to be dependent upon, one, how much you're using it, um, and two, sort of how stiff your lens is. So if it's having to work a little bit harder to, to drive that focus, it's obviously gonna use up some more power. So it's not like something like a monitor where it's like, okay, here's how long it stays on for. Um, I'm sure they'd stay on for a very long time if you just left them on and not doing anything, um, but it is kind of hard to gauge and estimate um, how long it would last because that really depends on the usage of it. Uh, you do have that on off control um, button on the controller, which is nice. Uh, so as long as you don't forget to turn that off, um, you know, it should last you probably a good while. Again, um, I'm just pulling the battery. I really, I, I'll admit, I don't really like the way that you have to pull these batteries out. Um, even if they had just put some little tabs on them or something, you know, like a GoPro battery, so that's easier to to get out. Uh, yeah, and that, you know, I'm nitpicking, but, you know, here we go. Oh, Urban Factor 506 just subscribed. Thank you very much. Let me see if these guys are paired up. We can get there. So, yeah, I'm paired. And now that I'm paired again, I need to uh, recalibrate. So let's see, we'll do it from uh, from this guy here. So it's, what was it, a single push and then long push. There it goes, yep, it is calibrating. Oop, I took my lens cap off. But yeah, see guys, it is doing its calibration. And so this time I did the calibration from, uh, from the controller wheel as opposed to the calibrate button on the motor. Uh, so like I said, once you familiarize yourself with the sort of shortcut commands uh, for the single button on these guys, you'll be able to do pretty much everything you need to do. Um, there we go. Holy smokes. Uh, I didn't think we'd be talking about this thing for 58 minutes, but we are there. We're going to have to wrap this guy up soon. Um, but yeah, so in the next couple of minutes, let me know if you guys have any additional questions uh, about the PD Movie Live Air 2. Um, I guess my overall conclusion is that I'm not quite sure if it is necessarily for me. Um, I like something with a little bit more of like pro power connections and mounting options, but um, the simplicity of this and, uh, and the functionality is all there. Um, if you don't want to worry about massive rigging and running power and, and all that kind of stuff, this works. Um, this works great. Um, you can just clamp it on, get it set up, run and go. There's no cables all over this rig. It is just working. Um, and it has enough power, um, enough torque and oomph uh, to drive my cinema lenses, uh, which is nice for something this small and compact. And then you do have the options to go higher up in the uh, in the hierarchy of, uh, of PD movie accessories, um, you know, get a different uh, thumb wheel uh, controller and all sorts of stuff like that. But again, this is the Live Air 2 kit um, that we took a look at today.
pretty cool. Um, you know, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any uh, last minute questions here before we wrap this up, guys. And while we're doing that, I'm going to go over here and we're going to take a look at our poll. So if you guys missed it, I'm actually going to put it back into the chat right here real quick. Last chance uh, live uh, viewers. That is our poll for the week uh, that we started at the beginning of the show. It is how do you prefer to pull focus? So a wireless follow focus like this PD, uh, PD Movie Live Air 2. Regular follow focus, meaning it's uh, you know just part of your rig. You grab it and twist the wheel. Uh, pull from the barrel, where you have your hand actually on the focus ring of the lens. Or are you an autofocus guy, uh, depending, obviously, if you have auto good autofocus lenses and a good autofocus camera. Uh, but go to that link there and um, get your votes in, because we are going to take a look at our results here in just a minute. All right, so there we go. No other chat. Let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to cover about the Live Air 2. Went over everything that's in the kit. We went over how you can use their particular cage that they give you, a little half cage. Um, you also do have the additional accessory uh, to be able to mount this just to, you know, any cold shoe, uh, whether it be on another camera or another cage, or even if you wanted to use it and mount another motor um, you could do so i got the charging got the interesting little battery solutions with the double stack and the single stack uh, and we talked a little bit about the uh, the app uh, and how it does connect to that app that they have um, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at our results so let me pull up the poll i'm interested here all right. Oh, wow. I did not expect that. I mean, we only got a few voters, but that, that usually is the way it goes. And if you are watching the replay of this, uh, please go ahead and vote. Uh, there is a link down in the description below where you can go ahead. I always keep these live. Um, but yeah, pull from the uh, pull from the barrel. Leave my auto refresh results on. So hand on lens. A lot of people do. Um, and then autofocus and wireless follow focus are the next. So far, we don't have anybody who uses one of the... Uh, the sort of just hard mounted uh, follow focuses, the regular follow focus. So we're, we're seeing wireless and we're seeing autofocus. And then it kind of surprises me, uh, pull from the barrel, hand on lens. I've done it before. You know, sometimes that's just the way to go. You don't need a whole bunch of tech and gear getting in your way. You just need to grab that lens and, and, and get that focus pull. Um, but yeah, interesting. So feel free to go ahead and keep get, uh, getting your votes in there, especially if you are watching the replay. These are always interesting for me to, you know, I go back and visit these like a week or two later and see what kind of results we get. And it's just, just interesting to see. All right, let's get back here. So we are just beyond the one hour mark. So I am going to start wrapping this up. Uh, but if you guys have any last minute questions about the Live Air 2, please let me know. Um, and um, if you have any last minute questions about anything else, please let me know as well. Um, and I'll try and answer those very quickly before we get out of here. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to give you guys my usual spiel and shtick here at the end. Um, of course, Thank you guys to all of you who were watching live. It's always awesome hanging out with you guys uh, in these streams. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Uh, if you didn't, I guess you can give it a thumbs down. Uh, sure. And sorry, I apologize. But then leave a message in the comments down below and let me know what I can do to make it better for you. Um, and of course, as always, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click that notification bell so that you can always be alerted whenever I have live streams or other review videos uh, coming out on the channel because like I said at the beginning I have a stack of stuff that needs reviewing downstairs and I gotta get to it and let me know if you guys like these um, this sort of live look review type thing too uh, I figured this was well suited to something that we could experiment with live um, and and see how it works uh, so let me know if you guys like that um, if you want to continue the conversation with me about this or anything else please make sure to go ahead and join the discord server there is a link down below in the description as well as links to all of my social media um, you can follow me on there and see everything that I am up to 
Um, and uh, the last thing is I do have uh, a link, an affiliate link for the PD movie Live Air 2 in the description down below. And I also have uh, been building some kits on kit.com. Um, and there's a link to that down there. So you can see the gear that I use and recommend. Um, and you can go ahead and, uh, you know, help out the channel by picking them up via those links. Um, so that is that. But anyway, guys, thank you again for hanging out. Looks like we're not getting any last minute questions. I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you guys next week. It will be December. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. I'll see you there. You guys take care of yourselves. This has been awesome. All right.